I created this TK Enter window without writing a single line of code. What if I were to tell you that there is a visual creator application for TK Enter? PyGubu Designer lets you visually create the graphical user interface of your TK Enter applications. You can, for example, pack buttons and frames without having to manually write code to do it. The advantage of this approach is speed. It lets you create the layout of your applications quickly. Another advantage is that it helps you to separate the graphical part of your application from the logic of your code. Join me as we start to look at PyGubu Designer, a rapid application development tool for TK Enter. Hi, my name is Jobin, and I'm an open source developer. My channel is called Jobin Pi, and it's all about Python and Linux. Welcome. So in this video, I'm going to show you PyGubu Designer. It's an application that's free and open source, and it lets you create graphical user interfaces uh, for TK Enter. So I'll, I'll show you how it works. So this is the main window. You have the widgets at the top. By default, it's set to show TTK widgets, which we can see here. So we have containers. Um, we have a section called control and display. So we have uh, the buttons there, the canvas widgets there, label widgets there, and all sorts of other widgets. And these are widgets standard to TTK. You can also create menus right within PyGubu Designer. So I'll show you how this program works. So the first thing I'll do is I'll create a top level widget. So this is a preview of my actual window. And in the top level widget, I'm going to add a frame. So now there's a frame and we can see the hierarchy on the left. So in the top level window, there's a frame currently called frame one. I can rename it here. I'm just going to call it frame underscore main like that. And then I'm going to add a label. And now that the label is highlighted, I'm going to go over to the text section here and I'm going to change the text to what is my favorite programming language. Okay, so we have our label there with a question in it. Then underneath the label, I want to put an entry widget. So from control and display, I can see entry here. So I'm just going to click on it. Okay, so we have that. Right now, the um, geometry manager is set to grid. And R stands for row and C stands for column. So right now the entry widget is in row one, column zero. And we can see that it's center aligned, but I want to have it cover the left side and the right side. So to do that, I'm gonna click on layout. And there is a sticky option here. If I select west, it's going to stick to the left. If I click on right, it's going to stick to the east. So if I want it to stick to the left and the right, what I have to do here is, is, is I have to hold down the mouse button. And as I do that, you can see a, a, a highlight rectangle. So I select that entire row and then I let go of my mouse. And now it's set to east and west and we can see that the entry widget reflects that too okay so so far so good so next i want to add another frame and i want to add that frame underneath the entry widget so i'm going to click on containers and click on frame and i want to call this frame frame underscore buttons because it's going to be used for holding buttons. I'm only going to have one button for now in this demonstration. So I'm going to click on control and display, then click on button. Then I'm going to change the text of the button. I'm going to write submit answer like that. 
And right now the entry widget and the button and the label, they're really close to each other. So I want to um, kind of separate the widgets a little bit. So I'm gonna click on frame underscore main. So that one's highlighted now. And whichever widget I click on, you can see that the selection in the preview changes. So I'm gonna click on frame underscore main. Then I'm gonna to go to padding and I'm just gonna set it to five. Okay, so that just gave it some padding around it. So that automatically looks a little bit better. But the button is still too close to the entry widget. So I'm gonna change the padding of this button as well. So I'm gonna go over to layout. Then I'm gonna change the pad Y, I'm gonna set it to five. So it gave it a padding of five at the top and at the bottom. If I only want to add padding to the top of the button and not the bottom, then what I need to do is separate this value with a space. So I can have five space and then zero. But I'll give it a higher number here so it'll be clear to see. So I'm gonna change this to 25. And we can see that it gave the top of the button a spacing of 25 and zero at the bottom. Now the bottom is showing a space here, that, but that's because of the frame. Um, but the button itself doesn't have any actual spacing itself at the bottom of that button. Now I can reverse that. What if I wanted to have spacing at the bottom, but not the top? So I can just reverse this. I can change it to zero and then 25. And now it applied padding at the bottom. And I can change these values to pretty much anything I want. So I can change that zero to an eight. So now the top has a padding of eight and the bottom has a padding of 25. So you just have to separate it with a space. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set the pad Y to five because I think that looks good enough. Okay, so we can actually preview our window by going to preview at the top and then clicking on preview and top level. And when I do that, I see an actual real preview, like I can see a button that I can click on. So now if I try to resize this, it resizes, but I don't want the user to actually resize this window. So let's change that. I'm just gonna close this preview window. Then I'm gonna click on top level and then I'm gonna click on appearance and I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom here. There's an option that says resizable. And, it, when I, and when I hover my mouse over the text, it tells me a little bit about this option. Right now it says determines if the window can be resized. So here I'm gonna change it to none. You may not be able to see it in the video. It's, it's, it might be getting cut off uh, in the screen recorder, but I'm gonna set it to none. And then I'm gonna to go to preview, preview on top level. And now if I try to resize it, it no longer resizes. Okay, so that's it. The window is actually pretty much complete. Um, at least the, the design section of it is complete, but you know, I can type stuff in here and so far I didn't have to write a single line of code. Okay, so eventually we do have to put our own code and logic for this submit button. So we should create the command method for this button now. So to do that, I'm gonna close the preview window. I'm gonna click on submit answer. And here we have a command section. And under callback, I'm gonna type a method name that I'm going to actually create later in the Python script. So I'm gonna write on submit button clicked. So I'm gonna save this project. And now to actually use this in my application, I click on the code tab at the top and there's multiple templates to choose from. There's application, there's code script and custom widget. And I'll show you the differences. I'm actually gonna start with code script. So this says create a coded version of the UI definition. So right now I'm gonna click on generate down here. Watch what happens in this preview. There, so it generated the code for the window that we just created in PyGooboo Designer. So technically, I can just click on copy to clipboard. So code copied. 
then I can go to my Python program and paste that code. So this is the same code that PyGubu Designer generated. And I'm just going to run this file and see what it looks like. It looks just like it did in PyGubu Designer. So now this is a full application that was completely generated in PyGubu Designer. I didn't have to write a single line of code so far. So that's what CodeScript gets used for. It generates the code for the design that you've made. So going back to the code section, what about application? What does application do? Well, if we click on it, this one says, create a PyGubu application script using the UI definition. So I'm gonna click on generate, watch what happens here. Okay, so now we get considerably less code and it looks different from what we saw under code script. So what do we have here? I'm gonna click on copy to clipboard and we can analyze it in, in our Python IDE. So I'm gonna remove the code from before and I'm going to paste this. Okay, so this is code that was also generated by PyGubu Designer. The difference is now it's referencing a UI file. A UI file is the same file that we saved in PyGubu Designer by going to File and Save. Or if you're starting a new project, you would go to Save As. And that file that it creates, it ends with a UI extension. And this Python script will essentially read that UI file and it'll recreate the design that you worked on in PyGubu Designer. So here we're telling it where to find that UI file. Right now my Python file is in the same folder as that UI file. So I haven't made any changes to this code yet. I'm just gonna run it and see what we get. And we get the same result as before, except now we have less code but this looks exactly the same as what we designed in PyGubu Designer. So you'll notice that it created a class called test app app. And that's because in PyGubu, that's the class name that it gave it. So we can change this. I'm gonna call it example project. And then I'm gonna click on generate again. Notice now that it changed the class name to example project. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this to the clipboard. Then I'm gonna go back into my Python file and replace that code. So now we have example project. So that's where the name of the class comes from. Another interesting thing is if I scroll down, I see a method that was created for me automatically on submit button clicked. It doesn't have any logic code in there, but it did create the method for me. And this method comes from here. When, it, when we clicked on the submit answer button, there's a callback section and the name that we put here or the text that we put here will ultimately end up being the name of the method as well. So now, technically all we have to do is put some code in here in our application should work. So I'm gonna write here, print the submit button was clicked. And let's just make sure it works. So I'm gonna run the program. Then I'm going to click on submit answer and it worked. So, so far, this is the only line of code that I've written. Everything else was completely generated by PyGubu Designer. But in order to actually finish this program, we have to get the user's input from this entry widget. I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing I'll do, I'm gonna go back into PyGubu Designer. I want to give a meaningful name to this entry widget. Right now it's just called entry one. I'm gonna change it to entry underscore user answer, okay? So, and I'm gonna save this file now. I'm gonna go to File, Save. 
Okay, so now the entry widget is known as entry underscore user underscore answer. So entry user answer. I'm going to go back into the code here and I'm going to write self dot entry user answer equal builder dot get object. And here I'll pass in the name of the actual entry widget which we called entry underscore user underscore answer. This part doesn't have to match what's in PyGoobo Designer. This is the part that needs to match the actual name of the widget in PyGoobo Designer, the name that we gave it. So now self.entry user answer will have a reference to that entry and we can use that in our code. Okay, so back to the submit button let's get the user's answer. So user underscore answer equals self dot entry user answer dot get. So we're using the get method on this entry widget. And now for the logic of our code, if user answer equal Python print you are correct. Else, please try again. Okay, and let's just make sure that this works. Let's make sure that we're able to actually get an answer from the user from the entry widget. Okay, so I'm going to write test here, and I'm going to click on submit answer. And we can see down here that it says, please try again. If I type in Python, it says you are correct. So the other section in PyGoobo Designer under code, and remember how there's like three different sections, three different templates. We looked at application. We looked at code script. There's also custom widget. Custom widget is if you're creating your own widget which you can do in PyGoobo Designer. And when you do that, when you click on generate, the code that it generates is meant to be used as a class for, for your own custom widget. So those are the three sections in PyGoobo Designer. So I'll show you what the UI file looks like. This is actually what the UI file looks like. It's XML data and PyGoobo will essentially read this and it'll recreate the widgets when, when you're using the application template. So that means if you use the application template, the one that generates less code, um, your, your users will also need PyGoobo to read the UI file um, so that it can regenerate the window or, or the widgets automatically. If you use the code script section, then your users won't actually need PyGoobo because it's generating plain Python code. The advantage with the application template is that it helps to separate your code logic from the graphical user interface code. Because um, you'll notice when the, the code for generating a graphical user interface can be quite a lot. And this is a a very simple window that we've created. So when you create a big application, it can quickly add up to, to a lot of code. Whereas if you use the application section, it helps to keep the uh, graphical user interface code to, uh, to a minimum. So this is the actual website of PyGoobo Designer. It's available on Git, GitHub. And to actually install it, you would use pip install pygoobu designer It's available for Linux, Windows, and Mac. PyGoobu consists of two main components. The first component is PyGoobu Designer. This application can generate UI files and Python code. The second component is PyGoobu, the main core. This component loads UI files and builds the user interface defined in XML data. 
If you plan on using UI files, the users of your application will also need PyGubu to load your UI files. But your users will not need PyGubu Designer, as the designer part is used to generate UI files or Python code. In other words, PyGubu Designer is for creating the design of your application, and PyGubu alone is used to open UI XML data and create the widgets on the screen for your users to see. We saw the basics of PyGubu Designer. This application is written in TKinter itself, and it is personally one of my favorite programs. If you would like to learn more about PyGubu Designer, please let me know down in the comments below so I could create more videos about this great application. Until the next tutorial, thanks for watching.